Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. We continue with polynomials. I'll say it again, because everyone likes polynomials. I hope you like polynomials. I do like polynomials. And of course, it's a counting polynomial. So I want to do more counting for you in a very great way. So essentially, we generalize the chromatic polynomial into what is called the touch polynomial. And the generalization, it's kind of very strange. The generalization looks very, very, very simple. But still, coming up with this idea is pretty brilliant. And yeah, so that's why it took so long, something like 50 years after the chromatic polynomial was defined, uh, Tut found the touch polynomial. And this is how it roughly goes. So remember that the chromatic polynomial had this definition um, using contraction and deletion. So you pick any edge, you delete it, or you contract it, and you throw in a sign whenever you contract. So contract is really this operation on the polynomial. And you throw in a sign, you keep on going until you hit um, the simple graphs and you cross out the one with the loops, right? So because loop doesn't have any coloring and you keep the other ones around. That's a way to define the chromatic polynomial. It's kind of not the correct way to define the chromatic polynomial. It's more a formula to compute the chromatic polynomial. But anyway, let's just take it as a definition, right? So there's contraction and uh, the deletion property, right? Delete, contract, delete, contract. And you can keep on going until you hit um, well, the easy graphs. And the point is we kill all loops. So here all loops are zero because loops rule out colorings, right? So no, no colorings are allowed. So the simple idea, which took some about 50 years to be developed, is we could, could keep the loops, just give them a variable called the variable y. And then specialization y to zero gives us our beloved polynomial back. And yeah, video done. That's essentially what it is. That's a tough polynomial. Um, maybe I should keep on going, but the idea is hopefully clear, right? Instead of killing loops, you give them a variable, such that specialization of that variable gives you your original killing. Well, that's kind of the, the whole idea. And yeah, the picture looks the same. What a surprise. So in order to define uh, the top polynomial, we run the same strategy, but now we keep uh, uh, a variable y for each loop. Right? And there's some silly rescaling going on. So this one gets now x squared instead of this guy here, but let's ignore that. So essentially you just do that, run the same algorithm and you give each loop a variable, namely y. And it's exactly the same definition. And essentially by construction, this will generalize the chromatic polynomial, right? So now specialization, I will make a more formal statement in a second. Specialization of y equals zero recovers the chromatic polynomial. Yeah, so that's absolutely great. So let's have the pictures again. Here's a picture, here's a picture that looks the same. Here's a picture, here's a picture that looks the same. Essentially, it's really the same. The only difference is you keep, uh, sorry, this one is actually, there's actually no Y involved here, but you keep the, the Ys whenever you see um, a loop. And that's essentially it. There, as you can see here, there's some normalization issues, but uh, nothing really serious. In other words, the chromatic polynomial is a tat polynomial at Y equals zero. Right, so traumatic, you have now a polynomial in two variables and specializing y equals zero uh, gives back the chromatic polynomial. That's sadly not quite true because of the silly renormalization. So let's have a look here. First of all, you throw in signs. So you need to, and they don't do this here, fine. So you need to renormalize by an overall sign that you can easily uh, compute. So let's really just, just ignore that crap. And then you also have this problem, so let's go back here, that we evaluate those polynomials at slightly different powers of x, so you need to correct for that one as well. Fine. Okay, so up to some kind of really silly nonsense, um, really what it is, and that's kind of what I would like to keep you in mind, is chromatic is a polynomial in x, and a stat is a polynomial in x and y, for y equals zero, because all we did is we said, instead of killing loops, we replace loops by a variable, and that's it. And it sounds somehow simple. It's not so clear why this should be useful, but the tat polynomial is absolutely fabulous. So it counts forests, 
It counts spanning force. It counts spanning subgraphs. It counts colorings because it generalizes tut polynomial. It counts, it counts, it counts, it counts. It counts zillions of things. So just evaluating this two variable polynomial at certain values and you get counts for various uh, statistics associated to the graph. Um, and this polynomial, which is absolutely fabulous, it looks like extremely silly generalization, but there's some brilliance involved in this generalization, is called the Tut polynomial. Right? And um, I will show you one more specialization, but essentially there are just zillions of different things that the Tut polynomial generalizes and also zillions of different things that the Tut polynomial counts. So it's actually extremely fabulous. Look silly is fabulous. Look silly is fabulous, okay? Um, here's another one. So if you don't know what the Jones polynomial is, I will define it for you. So uh, the Jones polynomial should be an invariant of a knot. So here's a knot. And uh, Tut knows knots. So we define it using the Tut polynomial. So what I'm saying here, if you know what the Jones polynomial is, it's Jones polynomial in this special case is a specialization of the Tut polynomial up to some silly scaling as usual. But anyway, so here's a, here's a knot and you checkerboard color, um, the checkerboard colors of faces, which means the following. Whenever you have a, a crossing, um, it should look like like this or the other way around. So, so you get kind of this, these opposite type of faces. Like here, the red face uh, goes all the way over the crossing. Okay, fine. Checkerboard coloring of the knot. Right? So you have a knot projection, checkerboard color it, and you put one vertex per red face, right? So here, from here to here, just one put one vertex per red face and connect them over the uh, crossing itself. Like something like this. So you yeah, put a vertex here, put a vertex here, and you connect them over the crossing and you get a graph. So this is the knot K and you get a graph associated uh, to the knot, which I call G of K. Well, it's a pretty simple process. So from a knot to a graph and the Jones polynomial is exactly the tut polynomial of that graph evaluated at the hyperbola up to the sign that you can ignore. So ignore the sign here, nobody cares about the sign and you evaluate the tut polynomial, uh, which I call P and not T, whatever, let's call it P. You evaluate it at the hyperbola. Uh, so Y equals one over X. Yeah? So, and that's the Jones polynomial in this case. So two already kind of very natural specializations. They are really kind of opposite of one another. In one case, you kill the Y, and in the other case, you evaluate Y to one over X, which is essentially the opposite of uh, killing the Y. Um, anyway, so the TAT polynomial, very straightforward, absolutely brilliant generalization of the chromatic polynomial and the Jones polynomial in some sense at the same time, by just putting in an extra variable, uh, which you either specialize to zero or to one over uh, X. And there are many other specializations which I'm not even covering in this video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.